study the hadith, correct? Yeah. Okay, so really what my question is, um, basically, is if the Quran is this perfectly clear book, sorry about that, because it states there explicitly, <laughs> it states there explicitly in the Quran, but it's perfectly clear, um, but there are, but it's, it's, it's well detailed, okay, and that, you know, basically that you can understand, you can comprehend it because it's, it's a clear book. So the question I have to ask myself is, what is the need for hadiths? Why do we have hadiths? Why do we have tasfir? So where does it say that it's clear? Oh yeah, yeah let, me read, let me read it to you. Um, let, me just, let me get out the, the source. Um, so let's go into the Quran. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'll read you three verses over here. So, Surah so, so 6, Ayah 114 says, Shall I seek a judge? <coughs> other than Allah, while it is He who has sent down unto you the book, the Quran, explained in detail. Yes? Surah 16, 89 says, And we have sent down on thee the book making clear everything, and as a guidance, and a mercy, and as, and as good tidings to those who surrender. So, it says book making it clear. Yes? Okay? Surah 41, 3. It says, um, a book whereof the verses are explained in detail. So you have a lot of verses that are saying it's clear, it's in detail. So in other words, it's certain the fact that you can understand it, you know, you can comprehend it, it's clear, it's detail, right? The question is, if the Quran is clear, why do Muslims go to the Hadiths? I think, uh, and I'm not really sure about this, but I think uh, in Surah Qalam it says that uh, you have the most excellent uh, character so even though the Quran it says that it's clear it doesn't say that it's simple so um, the Prophet Muhammad the reason why we need the hadith is because he's the one that actually acts upon the Quran so whilst the Quran covers all matters and I think he even says it in Surah Yusuf verse 111 um, you actually need the, you actually need Prophet Muhammad to basically show you how to act on it properly. But the question we're asking is this, is that you just mentioned the surah. Can you show us in the Quran where it states clearly that Allah or Muhammad commands that although this book is very clear and very detailed, but yet we're going to, 250 years later, we're going to produce a Sahil, Sahil Bukhari, Sahil Muslim. We're going to produce some hadiths after Muhammad is dead that you need to, um, that's going to be the sunnah of the Prophet, which you need to follow. Where does he command you as a Muslim to, um, to follow the hadiths? Well, I don't think the, the hadith weren't, comp they weren't made 250 years later. Okay, do you know when Sahih Bukhari was written? Yeah, it was compiled, but the hadith, they were taught orally. So first it was the Sahaba, then you had like the Tabi'in, but the Tabi Tabi'in. And they basically pass on, uh, they passed it on orally and okay. people memorized it. Okay, I think it's a fact that Sahih Bukhari came over 200 years later. He compiled it from, a, uh, from many people, se um, several generations afterwards, and he compiled the hadiths. Okay, it's a, it's, it's, it's a fact and even Muslim yeah. scholars agree with that. What I'm asking you is this, yeah, is where in the Quran does Allah or Muhammad state that you should follow this, um, I don't know, this um, plethora, this, this, um, these books, these numerous um, books with the hadiths, okay, and there's a science to it. Where do we, does Muhammad stick that in the Quran? Why, why do Muslims follow the hadiths when the Quran explicitly states that it is well detailed, it is clear, you don't need, you know, you should follow that. I mean, wh wh where do you get this from? Where did you get the hadith from? Well, in the Quran, it tells us that we have to follow Allah and follow the Messenger as well. So whilst Allah gives the Quran, we have the hadith. And as I said previously about how he has the most excellent manners and the most, like, the best character. So um, the Quran, even though we do have to follow the Quran, we also have to follow the way that the Prophet followed the Quran because he had the best understanding. Of it. Can you show me the Can you show me the hadith? Can you show me sorry the Quran where it states well, you should because I've asked a specific question and you've come with a answer that isn't 
quite what I'm asking, okay? You said that the Prophet has good manners, the Prophet, um, you know, and we were told to obey the Prophet. That's not what I asked, okay? Because obviously, I'm sure his companions followed him. I'm sure he's, perhaps his followers obeyed him. That's not the question I'm asking. I'm speaking about the hadiths. When we call, you know, you speak about, um, for example, Sahih Bukhari, you, talk, you use the word Sahih, and then you use Taif for those who are not yeah. authentic. So I'm asking, where does this idea come from? Where does this, uh, what I call innovation, or um, this kind of idea, do you know what I'm saying, which I believe that is been added to the Islamic faith, where does it come from? Because the Quran should be able to justify this. And I'm saying, where in the Quran does it say that? And where does it speak about all these books, these numerous books that's going to come some years after Muhammad dies, and that you should follow these books? Whilst it doesn't actually say that there will be like books which will like his sayings will be compiled, it still tells you you have to follow the Prophet. So even like during the time of the Prophet, every, like he would do things, he would say the hadith orally and the, the Sahaba, they would memorize the sayings of the Prophet and then they could teach it and then that was just basically carried on. So where does it say this? Someone's asking, where does it state? Can you, you have a Quran in you? Where does it say what? I'm asking, where does it state, okay, that these hadiths, okay, are to be followed? So we understand, we comprehend, I, I comprehend what you're, what you're saying. You're saying that Muhammad was obeyed by his followers, okay? That was at the time, the seventh century. Where does it say years later that you need to follow the sunnah or follow the ways or the teachings of Muhammad, okay? Um, let's say in 2018. That's what I'm asking. Because you know, you, what you've shown me, we, you haven't even shown me a verse yet. All you've done is um, given me some kind of, um, um, some head knowledge of what you've read in the Quran somewhere. I'm saying, where does it state that you need to follow these, these hadiths? As in even till today as well. Yes. I think uh, in Surah Nisa, okay, let's, let's, can I get verse that? 165. Oh, let me just get that. Let's... Surah. What, what number? What chapter is it? What chapter is it? I think it's chapter four. Chapter I think four. I might have got the wrong one. Okay. Because you know, it's a very important question because I think it's important to your dean. Yes. Because why are you following these books um, or these hadiths, and when there is no instruction from Allah or Muhammad, a lot of them, for example, contradict themselves. All these hadiths. Um, a lot of the information don't have, um, you know, and there's so many issues when you, when you, when you, that's why, you know, sometimes you have some Quran only Muslims. Because, yeah, Quran is, right. yeah, you're Quran is right. And so they've come to the conclusion that we are not instructed in any way whatsoever that there's going to be this body of literature that's going to come after, way after Muhammad's death, centuries after Muhammad's death, that we are to call authentic. There's nothing that says that, says it there. But, all they would do is point to the fact that obey Muhammad, but of course, you know, that the, the Quran, when it was revealed to Muhammad um, in the seventh century, of course, his followers would have obeyed him, okay? But he's died now. Yeah. And so, it would only conclude is that why is it that you do that? Why do you follow the hadith if there's no instruction? So, what I'll do is, um, just to move. Yeah. I think I might have, I might find it. Okay, what are you finding that? Let me just read to you. Um, actually, from yeah, your it's verse 65. Okay, let's find it. So it says, But no, by your Lord, verse they will not. Surah 4, Surah chapter 4. 65, not 100. I'm just going to get it in front of Okay, yep. Yeah, so it says, But no, by your Lord, they will not truly believe until they make you, O Muhammad, judge concerning that over which they dispute among themselves and then find within themselves no discomfort from what you have judged and submit in fully uh, in, in full submission right. and so and, yeah, sorry, yeah. and when it's and the last uh, same verse yeah the, so the last part of the verse it says we salimu taslima and when you look that up uh, the word were like you salimu I'm not, I don't know about the Arabic grammar, but I remember um, like an Arabic grammatist, Naman Ali Khan, he was saying that it basically refers, it's basically like the highest form of, not the highest form, but it's basically 
implies that, sorry, that you have to follow it throughout all times. But it doesn't say that. So what, you, what he's doing again, he's inventing stuff. He's saying, this is what Muhammad says in the Quran. Oh, sorry, this is what Allah reveals to Muhammad in the Quran. But I'm going to add a little spin on it, which is, this is for eternity. Or this is, sorry, not eternity. This is for um, time to come. When it doesn't say that there. Yeah, I know. But and so it's a spin and an invention that's added to the Quran because this doesn't actually state that there. Would you not say? No, even no, it doesn't. I don't really think he's really spinning it because me myself, I don't what know. What does it state that there? Does it say that you should follow no. this teaching um, to the end of time? Yeah, in the Arabic it says it, but obviously we don't know much about Arabic grammar. But when uh, Arabic grammatists and grammar experts in Arab in Arabic read you Salim or Taslima. It basically implies that it has to be followed for generations to come. And I'll probably have to like... So it implies, okay? Yeah. So, so we don't have any statements that explicitly no, state it that. it says that you have, when it says that, it means that you have to follow right, but what it. What I'm saying again is, what you're doing is you're not actually giving me what the Quran says. You're saying these scholars or these, um, the, the, uh, the, these people with their grammar and their Arabic, it's almost like hiding behind the Arabic again. Because you have a problem with it. Because the Quran is interpreted into English by Muslim scholars. And we're reading this, we're reading Piktal, and he's stating, explicitly stating um, certain verses, okay? And we know what he's saying. But yet, what you're going to do now is you're going to say, well, hold on, because I follow, I have to justify it some way. And so I'm going to go into the linguistics, I'm going to go into the Arabic and spin on it, put a spin on it and say, well, what it actually means, what Arabic, what the um, scholars are saying now is that it means for the rest of time, but it doesn't state that there. Let me just read you something, just moving forward. Let me yeah, just read you. you see, the thing is though, but, but an Arabic grammatist couldn't just make that up because then someone else could confirm what they're saying. So why don't and you then, show me where someone else is, why don't you show me where someone is stating that? Yeah, I've told you that Naman Ali Khan has said and he's not even like the highest like form of a grammatist. There's people that are higher than him. Isaac, it's a very simple question. I hope you understand it. I'm saying, why don't you show me where someone is showing that the Arabic is translated word for word that it's for the rest of time. Not just simply that some 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 um, some scholar or some some type of um, uh, person who, who who deals with Islamic um, Arab grammar is stating this. I'm not. Yeah. I don't want an opinion. Remember the last time I spoke to you, I said I'm not interested in what you say or believe. Yeah. I'm interested in what the Quran teaches. Yeah, so a video you can watch, but also you won't watch it now. But what? I'll tell you, the video is called um, the Ma like Why Do We Need Hadith If We Have Quran by Naman Ali Khan let me, let me read and if you yes. watch that video it, he goes into it in a bit more detail I can't remember but he was talking about like the, the words and, and but I, I can't remember it myself but, but maybe I've, if you yeah. go home and watch it yourself you can would you see that where, where the issue is that this religion your deen is so important to you you do things and you can't even articulate the reason why you do it you're following hadiths which you can't show me where um, Allah or Muhammad, all you're doing is relying on some YouTube video for me to go and watch and for some um, scholar somewhere who stated that it actually means for the rest of the time and you, you're following this religion and you're ignorant to what it's actually teaching. So for example, Sahih Muslim, book 42, number 747, yes? It says this, Ibn Sa'id al-Qudri reported that the messenger of God has said, do not write anything from me except Quran. Anyone who wrote anything other than the Quran shall erase it. So here, clearly he's stating that the Prophet himself says do not write anything aside from the Quran. Let me read what the Sirah says. You know what the Sirah, yeah? Sirah, Sirah, yeah, the, oh, like the, the, the biography. Yeah, 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 okay. This is what it says, yeah. It was narrated from Abu Sayyid al-Qudri. But the Messenger of Allah um, said, do not write anything from me Whoever has written anything from me other than the Quran, let him erase it and narrate from me, narrate from me. For there's nothing wrong with that. Do you understand what he's saying? He's saying do not write anything other from Quran. Now, it goes even deeper. Because here we have hadiths which are 30 years after the Prophet's death. Let me read this for you. From Ibn Ham Hanbal. Hanbal, yeah. Zaid Ibn Tabit. Um, the Prophet's closest um, revelation uh, writer visit, visit the Khalifa uh, Mayaiwa more than 30 years after the Prophet's death and told him a story about the Prophet 
But why I liked the story and ordered someone to write it down. But Zaid said, the messenger of God ordered us to uh, us never to write anything of his hadith. So, I mean, I did so many, there's so many, huh? Where does it? Uh, I really show it to you. It says, it says, but Zaid said, the messenger of God ordered us never to write anything of his hadith. And I can keep reading, there's so many texts, because I've looked into this. And there is no evidence whatsoever that you should be using the hadith. But you see, that conclude, or what I conclude from that is that it draws a major, major problem for you as a Muslim. Because how do you do your shahada? Or how do you do your zakat? Because zakat's not mentioned in the Quran. How do you do, um, I don't know, um, there's so many problems. You know, how do you do salat? How, how do you know how many times to pray? You have all these major problems, which you do, and what you find is you're just blindly following without actually looking at what Muhammad or um, Allah actually stated. When they're actually stating the contrary, they're opposite, um, stating the opposite, which is, do not follow the hadith, do not write anything about me. Stick to the Quran, the Quran is Allah's word revealed, and you, you must not do otherwise. So do you understand the problem you have? Okay. I'm not sure about the second hadith by Zayd ibn Dabba, but the first one could simply just be saying not to say anything which is like besides the Quran as in which is not the word of Allah or what yeah, is like basically made up and the second one I'm not really sure about it but it still doesn't say not to follow the hadith or to act upon it. What, what you pro the problem you have here Isaac is you cannot produce me one single verse that clearly stipulates that Muhammad commands you or Allah commands you that there is going to be a body of literature that's going to have a science to it that's going to come 250 years later the science is going to come in the 10th or 11th century later that you need to follow okay but what I have um, evidence or what I've proved to you is that there are texts in your in your um, in your authentic um, or in the most um, the most authoritative um, Islamic um, um, texts or sources that state the other or the opposite which is that you should not follow anything other than the Quran and so the evidence is heavily on my side unfortunately but again the problem is it's not just by me just you know simply just um, proving to you an argument I'm saying this throws a major spanner in your um, in your in your in your um, your dean and how you conduct yourself in your practices why are you praying five times a day why are you how do you do your Hajj it's only explained correctly, detailed in the hadiths. How, how do you do your salat? I mean, how, I mean, how do you fast? I mean, you're, 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 it might be mentioned in the in the Quran, but the, the details are in the hadiths. And so, right now, you you could be following a religion that's completely wrong, not what the prophet taught, but yet you are following it, even though it's in direct um, disobedience to what Allah and Muhammad are teaching. And so, I would I would encourage you Isaac, to go away and really look at this really understand why is it that I'm following something when it's not actually stated in my deen. I don't really think you've stated anything which says that you shouldn't follow the hadith. You said something about writing down the hadith and not follow And if you said that not to follow the hadith but it doesn't say anything about uh, sorry, writing. I mean, how clear can this be? I mean, I don't understand how clear this can be. He said, but Zaid said the messenger of God ordered us never to write anything hadiths are written right anything of his hadith it's it couldn't be more clearer it's like it's almost like are you standing in front of me and so what i'm saying to you is that i mean i haven't even read you i can go on and on and on look i've got so many verses that oh there's about there's about seven there's about i couldn't uh, there's about seven or eight different parts that i took out that show explicitly the prophet your, your prophet Muhammad, saying do not write anything or, um, any hadith or do not write anything about me except from the Quran but you can't even show me one where it states that in, in the Quran where you should follow it so you're practicing something that's actually in contrary with your with your with your with your deen and with your with your um, with your religion and so right now you're in error what I'm saying to you is that rather than follow this confusing 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 line um, chain of narrations or these hadiths or these signs rather just you know just Take, take a step back, look at it for what it really is, and look at the alternatives. 
And my alternative to you is, is I'm not trying to sound condescending, I'm just simply just giving you an alternative. If you look into the scriptures, if you look into the original books, the books that I mentioned, like when he speaks about the Injil and the Torah, you look at the life of Jesus Christ, you can, can, you can start to comprehend and understand that these are the true teachings of Jesus Christ. Not some, um, some hadiths explaining some, some false prophet's life, but it's actually um, the truth of, you know, of, um, of, you know, of the reason why you're created, the purpose Jesus Christ came to die and uh, across your sins. And it gives you an explanation, it gives you an understanding. You don't have to start to get these confused. Do you see know what I'm saying? As I'm saying, it's out of love. I'm not just, I'm simply saying, look at it correct, look at it properly. Don't look at it from an objective or not just from a surface level, from a correct standpoint. Okay? And I believe that you come to the truth. Yes? Yeah, but there is okay. one thing I should say that sure. even the hadith, it also comes from Allah as well. So whilst it's not an actual formal piece of scripture like the Bible, the Torah, the Quran, it is still from Allah. So even if you were to follow the hadith, you'd still be following Allah. And there are various hadith which show that, like, um, hadith would be, like, even there's such thing as hadith Qudsi, which is basically directly from Allah, but it's not basically put into the official scriptures of the Quran. And there's also hadith like um, times where you'd see the Prophet, he'd receive a form of revelation from Angel Gabriel, the Holy Spirit. But it wouldn't be put into the Quran, but it's in the Hadith. It's so, Sahih al Muslim. Um, 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 hadith Qudsi. What do you mean? No, no, you said no, that there's that certain hadith. hadith. Yeah, certain Hadith. But that's what I'm asking you. I'm saying to you, you will say to me that there are six ha um, Hadiths that you follow. Okay? One of them will be um, perhaps um, Sahih al Muslim, Sahih al Bukhari, then there'll be um, Abu Dawood, and you, you have this, um, various, yeah? I'm saying, are any of these Allah's words? No. Yes. But when you go to Allah's words, He doesn't mention anything about following hadiths. Do you not understand that? But yet, when you go to your sources, the Sirah, okay, when you look at the biography of people who wrote about Muhammad, He clearly states this that do not follow hadiths. So, what is the hadith? What is your definition of the hadith? No, my, my, my understanding, okay, is hadith is, is following the, 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 the way, the ways, his, um, his conduct, um, the things that, the way he carried himself. And so, it's like, um, it's like an example that that, that, that Muhammad. Um, I mean, I can bring up the definition, but that's basically no, 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 essentially your, what it is. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, where yeah. does the actual, where do the hadith come from? Did he make up himself, or did he, or did he just, or did it come from Allah? According to your understanding. I'm saying that the hadith, according to my argument, has nothing to do with Allah. Yeah, but I've just told because, you because 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 you would say that Muhammad speaks Allah's words, correct? But Muhammad himself stated that do not write anything about me from um, that any hadith about me. Okay. Now, unless Muhammad is in contradict uh, is 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 uh, is um is in disagreement with Allah, okay, then I would take you as a Muslim would take what Muhammad says, okay. But you haven't presented any argument, so. Um, so far, that's why I say go away and look at it. Because how could it? Of course, I'm not, I'm not Muslim. I don't believe in hadiths or the Quran. However, I'm looking from your perspective. Why are you following these hadiths when you can't show me where Allah or Muhammad told you to, to look into it? Yeah, I'll show you yeah? that you have certain hadith which are revealed from Allah, such as the time once when. Um, sorry, sorry. Can you tell me again? Like for example, once there's a hadith in Bukhari which says, <coughs> so, that you once, you're, you're quoting a hadith again. Yeah. You're doing exactly no. what Allah told you not to do. No, you said not to write. I'm not sure about the writing part, but it doesn't say anything about not following. Brother, I, I, I do respect you, and 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 um, but but with all respect, if Muhammad says, do not write any hadith about me. It just logically follows that he doesn't want you to follow anything about him in, in terms of the hadith. He says only go to the Quran. That's what I just read to you. He says just go to the Quran. Is that what I said? So I, um, Muhammad is communicating to you. If you want to know anything about me or my revelation from Allah, go to the Quran. Okay, so, by you, so it just logically follows that if he doesn't want you to write anything about the hadith, he's saying, well, do you know what? I do not comp I'm, I'm not looking at, or I'm not um, off, off, um, no, giving you um, 
authorization, if you like, that this is from Allah. This is how Allah wants you to behave. So you have to ask yourself, why do I do these things that I do? You cannot follow like a blind sheep. You've got to look at your deen for what it is. Yes? I don't know about I have uh, to go, I have yeah. to go. So, um, um, but yeah, but, but, but yeah, good discussion. Look into it some more, my friend, yeah? yeah? Okay? okay thank, thank, you. You. thank you, thank you, thank you. So yeah, now I just want to conclude, um, that's how I say, is that, again, you know, we speak to Muslims, and they will always tell us, well, hold on, in order for you to know about the teachings of Muhammad, then you have to look into, into the hadiths and they'll say, oh, you know, um, some are sahih, some are daif, and some are authentic, some are not. But the question is, is that where is this um, statement stipulated, or where is this commandment instructed in the Quran? And they'll give you, they'll show, they'll, they'll show, you know, um, verses like, uh, um, you must obey the Prophet uh, um, Muhammad. But of course, you, you know, you obey the Prophet, but he's dead now, he's dead and long gone. Where is the body of literature that you must now follow um, about his life? See, the major problem that this causes Muslims is that how do they carry out their practices? Why is it they pray five times a day? It's in the hadith. How do they do um, their hajj, you know, um, you know, their pilgrimage? It's in the hadith. How do they, um, you know, do their zakat? It's in the hadith. I mean, all these practices that they do, it's all in the hadith. So I'd encourage Muslims to, to turn away from this confusing um, form of literature and science. I mean, of course, there's so many contradictions within the hadith in itself. But come to a better book. Come to the to the book that is from God, revealed to um, um, revealed to man, it was, it was, um, inspired by inspired by God, which is the Bible, and it gives you the truth. Jesus said, "I am the way, the truth, and the life." And if you want truth, it's only when you start with the Gospels of Jesus Christ. And encourage Muslims to start with the Book of John, and 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 read through it. And you find the answer and solution for us, mankind, in Jesus Christ. God bless.